Well, contrary to earlier media reports, the uh, governor of Ebony State, David Umayi's campaign team, has denied that the state governor has stepped down from the presidential race. In a statement, the group says the presidential aspirant only received the president of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, at his Abuja residence. And during the visit, the Senator Lawan, Senator Lawan commended Governor Mai for his steadfastness in the ruling APC and lauded him for making the party proud through massive infrastructure development of Ebony State. This is what Umai had to say to his guest. The decision is not in my favor. I will find the decision. I will continue to support him, support the party. And so I can assure you that if that mantle falls on you, uh, I will say we will be very lucky because uh, even if it's not me, would you be able to have somebody that, you know, almost share the same character, you know, content uh, with you? And so I start the partnership with you that if it is you, I will be the first to jump out of the partnership. Should God make it possible for me to emerge, I'm sure that my brother, Your Excellency, you'll be by my side throughout the campaign for APC to win the general elections. Well, I've been joined by the Commissioner for Information and State Orientation in Abuja State, Oji Uchenda Oji. Well, he will shed more light on the issue. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on the program. Well, we're grateful for that clarification that uh, his Excellency has not stepped down, but of course we saw that video where he's saying if the Senate President emerges as a consensus candidate, he will support him. So my first question to you really, um, how's the last minute push to ensure that he becomes that uh, consensus candidate or just the flag bearer of the party? Looking Thank forward. you very much. Uh, our dear governor believes in divine providence. He does believe that at this point in our history, um, it is not going to be a business as usual any longer. Uh, Nigerians and indeed political parties need to look at the credentials of the people that are contesting election. For APC, uh, one has to say that the principle and philosophy of APC, which is uh, you know, peace, uh, justice, peace, and unity, um, I think they have demonstrated that by virtue of what we are hearing uh, a moment ago about the decision of the governor's uh, forum in the north that uh, the presidency be ceded to the south. For the governor, he thinks that um, being part and parcel of the party, APC, that whatever is the decision of the party, he will abide by that. Of course, he has made his consultations, but the greatest of all his consultations is the fact that he has something on ground to demonstrate that if he's given the opportunity that he can make Nigeria proud. He has done that in Ebony State, and the people are very proud of him. Ebony State, before he came on board, was like a glorified village, an enclave where nothing good was coming from. But today, Ebony State is a signpost of excellence in terms of infrastructure. Today, we are celebrating a state that has the biggest shopping mall in West Africa, a state that has the best network of road after Lagos and Abuja, a state that has the highest number of flyovers after Lagos and Abuja done under the administration of one man, the governor of Ebony State. A state that has an agricultural transformation that is impacting on the living standard of the people of the state. A state that has a wonderful, you know, infrastructure, critical infrastructure that will trigger economic development, for instance, the international uh, airport that is fashioned after Abuja and, 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 and Lagos International Airport, such that competitively in terms of business it can always, uh, you know, stand, stand the test of time. And I can tell you that uh, we also have Africa's biggest and most beautiful uh, um, University of Medical Sciences, which indeed conceptualized and built. We have a ecumenical center that is the biggest in Nigeria. We have quite a lot of things that have been put in place to make life meaning, meaningful in Ebony. So we believe that if we have such opportunity, or if Nigerians, of course, APC, don't see the kind of our, um, track record that he has, by the grace of God, they will consider him. And we're very happy yeah. that uh, they are already saying that 
they are going to consider track records of excellence. They will consider youthfulness, that is, somebody that has energy, the zeal, and the passion, and also somebody that also uh, confines or conforms to the issue of equity and the nation building. All right, that's great. I mean, uh, very laudable credentials you've uh, reeled out of uh, the, your governor, uh, Umayi, there. But let's look at the geopolitics of the Southeast and uh, the contestants coming out from that uh, region are quite uh, a number. Are they thinking of uh, consensus here, yeah, the, the spokesperson to your state uh, governor and the state? Have you heard anything that the Southeast will produce a consensus candidate so that they can go as a block uh, to the primaries? Yeah, the more the number, the more, <laughs> the, the more interesting <laughs> the politics, the democracy is. However, I believe that consensus is the beauty of democracy, where there has to be a kind of negotiation, you know, that will be a kind of a moment, a meeting point for people contesting. I think there will be opportunity for that, but that is not going to affect the whole process. If uh, a group say they will, or says uh, that they won't uh, you know, be part of the consensus. What well, that has got that has not removed. Wouldn't anything. it be better for the southeast? You understand, instead of going with the different mm -hmm. contestants, some would put, say that was puts your votes in one block and get a candidate that you know has really performed. Yeah. Everybody has performed. Yeah, let Mr. me President say that it so. uh, is actually no issue whether or not it happens. What is important is that they have opportunity to do that, which Mr. President has offered them. You go and discuss with your people and Absolutely. see how you can come with a consensus. Yeah. That is a good offer mm -hmm. by Mr. President. However, if that doesn't happen, they can, the law is clear, the, the Electoral Act is clear. You know, when there is consensus, what does happen? What really constitute consensus? It must be 100%. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know the process of uh, all of this consensus building will be talked to even when you are not happy, you try to appreciate what uh, has been done. And of course, when there is no consensus, there will be indirect primaries as provided by the Electoral Act. Mm -hmm. So all of this is will be in place. But what is important is that the APC leadership will look at somebody that can really deliver APC during the election. And Nigerians are sick and tired of political promises. People will come and promise because of the fact that their money bags. They'll come and promise seven and S, invest money to do nothing after they have been elected. I think Nigerians are looking for the best and the best will come from APC. And I believe that my boss, the governor of Ebony State is the best. Going by equity, it does favor him. Youthfulness, it favors him. Track record, it favors him. Good health, strong health, it does favor him. And loyalty <laughs> and humility, it does favor him. What? So okay. what prevents uh, John the Baptist from being baptized? <laughs> well, at the end of the day, he still has other 22 contenders as well. As Okay, 21, as Badaru has stepped down yeah. uh, from the information we've gathered. But, of course, today is a sad day for Nigeria as a nation, looking at the unfortunate incidents in Owa, in Ondo State. You have talked about the track record of your governor when it comes to infrastructure and others. Security is a big challenge in the country right now. How is he intending to tackle this big issue if he emerges as a flag bearer of the party? Thank you very much. Let me mention that security is very cardinal in his program if he becomes the president. Security is number one. Another one is economic development that will target at curating job, you know, making uh, using women to be self-reliant. And when we tackle insecurity and tackle corruption, which are the two canker ones, we are already addressing the problem, social problems. And when we do create opportunities through you know, creation of uh, economic facilities, our people will naturally get employed, get busy, and insecurity will gradually phase off in Nigeria. So it's looking at bottom top approach, engaging the people, engaging stakeholders, talking to them, through looking at uh, you know value reorientation of the people uh, and also looking at how to get people engaged and it's looking at uh, getting to the regional points the what i call sub national engagement processes to talk to the people each region has its peculiar a uh, problem security issue the issue the, the remote and the immediate cause so he will need to tackle them but uh, essentially he needs to also do what is called nation building which is important to make for confidence among the people 
of Nigeria so that whether you are from Igbo outside Yoruba, you should appreciate that we are one. So these are the things that he will do. Of course, he's going to tackle education. Formal education will be very important. And he also empower our people, empower the youth and women. And um, he's also looking at um, getting to identify the non-state actors and try to have a special school for them to see how they can be rehabilitated. <laughs> and uh, empowered to be self-reliant to really get away from the streets, stop causing havoc in the street. Brian, well, we'd have to say thank you so much and all the best <laughs> as we look forward to the convention. Of course, it, it kicks up tomorrow. Uh, Commissioner for Information and Orientation, Oji Uchenna Oji, thank you for joining us. Today.